Okay, so this is the video tutorial for the random box assignment for CRT 101. So the point of the random box assignment is to create a laser cuttable box to uh, encapsulate some sort of random object that you've been assigned. So for today, I'm going to use this random object. This is a 3D printed Mario figure. And when I measured it, um, it measured about five inches wide, five inches tall, and about three inches thick. Um, now I'm rounding up for these. You want to make sure that you leave enough kind of room along the sides to uh, fit your object into the box. And so it's okay to round up and you know add a half inch or so just to make sure that you're not cutting it too close when you do your design. So with that in mind, uh, we're going to start off by using a great uh, resource called MakerCase. And so if we go to MakerCase.com, uh, we're going to choose to create a basic box. And this is what we're going to uh, used to create a laser cuttable box file that we'll then customize in Inkscape. So to get started, I'm going to refer back to my design measurements of 5 by 5 by 3. Uh, and I can go ahead and put those in for 5 inches wide, 5 inches tall, and 3 inches deep. Uh, now those were the size of the, the actual character. Uh, and I need to make sure that it can fit inside uh, that box. And so I'm going to make sure that this is turned to inside dimensions and it'll actually make the box a little bit larger to make sure that our Mario can fit inside. In terms of material thickness we're going to use a custom thickness and we're going to put in 0.2 inches because that's the thickness of the foam core that we use to laser cut in the lab. We want to make sure that we're going to do a closed box. We are going to be sealing our, our random object inside the box uh, and we're going to choose finger joints and you can see that that kind of creates these little seams where you'll be able to put these together um, but we do want to max out the finger size as much as possible. Uh, this will actually make for a stronger box that goes together easier, and it'll cut down on the amount of time that it takes to laser cut the box, uh, and that's really good too. So again, make sure you slide that all the way and max out the finger size. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to download the box plans. Uh, and in this case, you'll see that it has some labels, but we want to disable those labels, and so we'll click Disabled. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. And we do want to download an SVG of these plans. So we'll go ahead and click Download SVG, and you can see that it's going to download here. What we'll then do uh, is we're going to open up our Inkscape program and go to File Open. We'll go over to Downloads, and we'll open up that SVG that downloaded. And we can expand our window out. And so here we can see very lightly outlined in red uh, the actual box plans. Uh, and so this is what we're going to begin working with. Um, but we need to kind of break these apart so that we can kind of manipulate them separately. So if I go to Path and Break Apart and then Object and Ungroup, you'll now see that I can actually individually select each of these panels. And that's good because we're going to customize a few of these. Um, I really want to be able to see what I'm working on here, though. Uh, and so I'm going to select all of them by drawing a big box around them. And I'm going to right click here and set the stroke and that's going to set it to a nice kind of black thin line uh, so I can just see it on my screen a little bit better. Now at this point then um, I'm going to have the black line be the area that gets cut by the laser um, but I want to uh, augment my design a little bit um, by putting in a clue that's going to kind of give a hint to somebody who's looking at the outside of this box as to what might be inside. So since I'm working with a Mario character, um, I think I'm going to do a Mario coin block since Mario kind of hits blocks and kind of, uh, makes uh, different objects come out of it or coins. And I want to find something that's going to be good for to do a bitmap trace with. So lots of really complicated images here. I want to choose something that just looks like it's going to be pretty straightforward for me to cut out. So I kind of like this one looks pretty good, looks pretty basic and I think I can make it work. Uh, this one also maybe would work out okay. Something just pretty, pretty straightforward. So I'm going to choose this one and I'm going to open the image in a new tab. I'm going to right click and save image as and I'm just going to save that to my desktop so that when I'm here I'm going to actually engrave it onto one of the panels of my box. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to file I'm going to go to import, and I'm going to find that file and click open. And I can leave these as the default. And it's going to place the image right here. Okay, and that's pretty good. Um, but this is a raster file, um, and I need to be able to convert it into a vector format so the laser knows how to cut it. To do that, I'm going to go up to path, 
and I've noticed I've got this object selected, uh, and I'll go to Trace Bitmap, and in here, I'm just going to go ahead and click Update, and I can see that it begins to trace that bitmap, and I can change the threshold here. We're using the brightness cutoff. Um, I'm going to change that down a little bit to see if that changes anything. doesn't really affect it too much, and with these colors, there may not be a whole lot that it's going to do, but I can experiment. Okay, that takes a little bit more away, but it's kind of not looking like so much of a box. So I'm going to raise it back up. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Okay, and that's pretty okay. That still looks like a, a question block. Uh, so I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to hit it just once, because you'll notice that over here, the image has changed a little bit. And so I can close this down. I'm going to click and drag that over here on top of this box. And I'm going to kind of click on our original image and click delete because I don't need it anymore. And so I want to resize this a little bit, um, but you might notice if I kind of drag on here, I can accidentally kind of stretch it out of shape. And that's not really good. Um, I don't want that to happen. And so if you ever want to resize something, you can click on this little lock button here. Uh, and that means that when you resize it, it's always going to stay in the correct proportions. And so I'm going to make that nice and big over here. And again, notice how my design isn't super complicated. It's fairly straightforward and simple. Um, but I do want to kind of view this as the layer laser is going to view it. Uh, and so I'm going to click the X here to uh, reduce the fill um, just to nothing. And then I'm going to right click on the red and hit set stroke. Uh, and now I can see how that laser is going to kind of follow this pathway to uh, engrave this part of the box. So you'll notice that I have the black areas defined where I want to cut, and then the red areas are going to be where the laser will engrave. At this point, I want to save my image, um, but I'm going to uh, save it as a new file, um, and I'm going to call it Zane Box, and you should call yours by your first name and call it Box, and we're going to save the SVG, um, and that'll be a good source file, but for the laser, we actually need it in a different format that we're going to save it as well. So we'll go to File, Save as, and we're going to come down here to uh, Desktop Cutting Plato AutoCAD DXF R14. Um, that's really important. If you have an R12, uh, that's not compatible with our laser cutter. You want the R14, and so we'll save that. And now it's going to be called ZaneBox.DXF, and that's just fine. I'm going to save it to my desktop. Okay. You'll want to make sure that you have the, the settings set correctly. So both of these boxes here should not be checked. If they're checked by accident, go ahead and uncheck them. And you need to make sure that your base unit is in inches. That's very important. If it's not in inches, it's not going to come in at the right scale. At this point, we can click OK. And that will take a moment. It's going to convert that to a file for us that we'll be able to upload for the laser. So you can see it's zanebox.dxf now. Uh, and if we go back to our uh, web browser, if we go to Hackberry Lab, dot com slash files and hit enter. That's going to take us to the Hackberry Lab file server. And this is where we're going to be able to upload our file. So we don't have to email it or save it to a USB drive. Um, this is actually accessible on any file uh, or any computer rather in the lab. So if I just click on this white area, I can see zanebox.dxf. Again, that's the laser cutter one. And I can click open. And right now it's been added on the file server. Uh, at this point, then, I'll wait my turn until I get called over to the laser cutter so we can actually cut this on foam core and glue up our box and see if we can uh, hide our secret item inside the, uh, the mystery box. And that's it.